Hello, listeners. This is Jim Keith Bartender coming to you from the podcast from Key Largo. It's a beautiful day. It's a hot day. I'm consciously trying to slow down the pacing because I, I would like to say I'm over. I accidentally over caffeinated myself today. And, but it wasn't, I, I'm like two and a half cups in. And if I haven't, I've eaten some fruits this morning, but I didn't really eat. I, I guess I need to balance it with carbs or something like that, but I just over, over caffeinated. I've never done crack per se. I've never done crack, but I imagine, I don't know, this could be. A similar effect, or more like maybe crystal meth. I've never done that either, but I have a feeling that it's similar. I'm kind of a hyper guy without the caffeine, and you can imagine just giving me a couple of them. I do it at work. I do it at work a lot, but I try to expend that energy by running around. I keep my head down. When I'm at work and I drink this coffee and I may do like two, maybe three cups. And it's just too much. But if I keep the food going in me, sometimes it kind of counterbalances it. And so I thought, what better way to expel this energy by doing a podcast, a stream of consciousness. And so ha- here we have it. Here, you know, what... what what is a guy to do when he's all hyped up? And it it works sometimes. It works when you have to do things. If you're, uh, I mean, it would have been a perfect day. I mentioned to the wife. I said, you know, this is the way I should be when I'm at the gym. So I channel it, lifting weights, running on the elliptical, all those things. I am sped up. I mean. I, don't know, I, I I think it's multiplied what happens with me when I have caffeine, when I'm in a positive frame of mind and then I'm drinking coffee and I stay off the um, news channel so I don't get too much negative vibes. I got to watch that stuff sometimes in the morning. Like I said in previous podcasts, there's no need to get yourself into a bad mood some days. You know, sometimes it's right now it probably would be a good time to get a little downer to bring you down. Okay. Kind of manic. You know, being manic is I, I was I have a history of that. You probably if you're an avid listener, you've probably seen it. You probably heard it. You said, Well, Jim sounds I've had people say and uh recently said, Jim, you sound kind of depressed or under under stress, a little anxious. Well, I'm I'm an I'm an anxious fellow. Not I, I don't think anybody has ever accused me of being a calm individual. I've been called thoughtful, intelligent, humorous. No one's ever said, oh, yeah, that's a very calm, relaxed person. Now, I can be relaxed in situations. I can be relaxed in some emergency situations, relatively compared to other people. But generally, my tempo is kind of turned up. And you figure by this time in my life, things just start slowing down for me. When I was in college, I would do the same thing in the morning. I, I would start drinking. In college, we, who, who the hell had a coffee maker in college? I guess I should have had a coffee maker the way I would, because you're always thinking one cup at a time. At least that was me. I don't ever think make a pot of coffee, but I drink a half a pot of coffee. Out of all the drug of choices that I have out there, besides after 
after water, after water, I'd have to put a link. Let's let's put my and obviously alcohol because I had to I had to eschew alcohol because being an alcoholic. But out of all of them, I'd have to rank water as number one. You'd be silly not to rank water as number one. It's the basis for all different drinks. You always have water in it. Whatever you're drinking, there's some water in it. But after water, number two in my life, coffee. Number three has varied many a times. Even when I was... At some times, I guess maybe coffee would be number one. And then alcohol number two and water was number three. There were times where I drank way less pure water, meaning nothing else in it. Now, nowadays, I'd have to rank it. Water, coffee, and then everything else, whether it be, uh, gosh, I think it's water and coffee. Some tea every so often. But I'm not one of those guys that drink the regular tea. I drink like chai or dragon fruit or dragon tea or whatever shit they have out there. I'm not big in that Earl Grey or English breakfast stuff. My apologies to the British Isle. It's just not my thing. It's not the caffeine. It's just the taste. I never really took to it. I do do a nice tea every so often when I go out. I don't know why I reflexively do that. Uh, But I'm not here to talk about my consumption habits of beverages. I'm here to talk about First of all, in this moment, being over-caffeinated. And I have to explain my reactions are much more extreme. Sometimes it, when I'm over-caffeinated, I make assumptions that when I'm having a conversation with someone, that they understand what I'm talking about. I really have this uncanny, not uncanny, I have this propensity that when I'm speaking to people, I'm thinking, oh, I psychically sent you the whole explanation. So whatever I'm saying, I'll just start right in the middle or right at the end. And people go, what the fuck are you talking about, Jim? And then just remember, oh, wait a second. I remember you don't read my mind or I didn't tell you any of these things. And people make the, you know, I give extreme reactions when I'm on caffeine. I'll just nowadays being in touch with stuff. So listen, I apologize. I'm over caffeinated right now. Too much caffeine. So I'm going to go one way. I mean, I'm trying not to. I say, I'm not going to be, I'm not angry. But you may get a true reaction. You may get a stream of consciousness from me. I like to let people know that. And I guess the impression would be, hey, this guy has a drug problem. Well, I guess caffeine is a drug. But I don't view it as a problem. I really enjoy it. It's something I feel good about. I don't feel as if I've had too many negative reactions. I mean, other people may have negative reactions. People had to listen to me. I'm quite the ear job. And like I started telling you earlier, which I didn't finish, in college I would get up in the morning after a hard night of partying, drinking, binge drinking, and do my coffee. And then I'd be rattling off. Some people, and like listeners here, I guess that's the general population of podcast listeners, some people have a taste for listening to Jim, some people don't. And it's probably, I'd have to say, it's probably less than a majority of people. I can, it's a, probably a small, a small minority of people would actually enjoy this. Say, this guy is fucking crazy. Listen to him talk all this time. He's just rattling off the whole time. He's not slowing down. He's not explaining himself. He just goes from this point to the next point. 
that is my conversation is like a jock, uh, Jackson 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 Pollock painting. It's all over the place. But that's the way I may experience the world. Like one of those frenetic, crazy uh, people out there and just say, hey, you know, attracted by shiny objects, distracted. But that's the way I experience the world. I could be listening to the news, listen to something about the war in Ukraine, and then I'd be thinking about work, about my workout, about things I'd like to do tomorrow, all within the same minute. And a couple other things. That's the way I experience the world. And that's the way I try to express myself. It's not for everyone. And a lot of people don't like that. They like to say, I want to talk about one thing. And not, I don't need to be jumping all around. I can't handle that. And I, 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 ha- I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And it's not for everyone. That's the nice thing about the podcast. I don't have to get on the phone and talk to someone and be that ear job. You saw me post on one of the previous episodes. My friends made that, that uh, license plate for someone. They put it on the front of his car. Said, big nose, ear job, penzi yuppie underneath. Guy didn't recognize it for a couple of days. I was driving around with him. Well, ear job is someone that's just going to beat your fucking ear off. And that's me. But the nice thing about this, you don't have to listen to this. You can turn it off. And I'm not insulted when people say, well, people say, oh, you have a podcast? I want to listen to it. And the first thing I say when they say, I want to, oh, you have a podcast? I want to listen to it. I say, listen, it's not for everyone. I always had this perception. I say, listen, all I need is to be exposed to a large amount of people. And some of those people will say, hey, this guy kind of thinks like me. It could be 1%. 1%. It doesn't mean those 1% are better than the other 99%. It says that 1% are people that experience the world that way or they can appreciate the way someone, when I say appreciate, it doesn't mean it's art or anything like that, but they have, an, they have appreciation, meaning, oh, I, I, I kind of do that myself. I kind of do that myself. I've, I've never really learned to be coherent. I'm a ranter, but rant, not like the guy screaming out in the middle of the street, which I guess I'm kind of screaming out into the internet. And I'm just, sometimes I just like to let it go. I like to let it rip. I know I'm using a metaphor. It sounds like it's a fart. It is a brain fart but it's mine. And in some way, I think people will say, hey, listen, this guy is fucking insane. But he's able to somewhat manage navigating through this world, making it to his age, which I'm 58 years old right now. He's able to manage without being put into a hospital and someone saying, hey, listen, you should really get some help. Oh, this is my help. My help is talking to some people. You, listener. And I do appreciate it. I hope someday I'd be able to listen to you. I don't know everyone that listens to it, but every so often I get an email from one one of you, I do appreciate it. If you need to reach out to me, I, I at this moment in time with the level of popularity of it, I'm starting to get some emails and things like that, but I'm able to answer each email. So if you'd like to send an email to me with a comment, it's jim at keysbartender.com. I'm still amazed by the international, you know, facet of the show that people from other countries say this is a crazy guy in the far southern part of the United States and you know what if I'm the only 
exposure they have to a U.S. citizen, they may be getting the wrong impression of us. And I do apologize for that. If they end up liking what I'm saying, then maybe I don't need to apologize. Say, well, it's, you know, I guess Americans are do vary. And they may think that people say, well, I'm going to study some of the English language. I'll listen to his podcast. And they'll say, well, uh, this is what they talk like in the South. No, it is not. Most certainly it's not like. And this is not the way they talk in where I'm from either. There are some people like me. And I'm sure there's some people in Romania or Australia or India or Taiwan that have similar habits of the stream of consciousness kind of talking. But I think there may or may not be. I think this hampers my ability to, for my target of becoming one of those variety shows I always talk about being where this transit to that. I'm going to keep this section when I do it like 10 minutes be my opening and then I go into a show my interview skills I know how to ask questions I'm moderately good at listening I'm trying better to listen but I'm a very distracted person I think I can force myself I can have cards I can write cards down I say listen these are the questions I have to ask but when something is said that needs a follow-up, I think I might be good. I'm, I'm really good at the follow-up questions when something comes up that I'm not sure about. I'm a, I always prided myself on being a, with the stream of consciousness thing. I think it's like Columbo. You're just talking about shit, doing back, bop, bop, bop. It's kind of like um, doing one of the scat singers. Bada dee boop bop 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 bee things like that and people say wait a second and they say something and I pick up on it and then I follow up on that so it's it's I get I don't know if it would be really interrogation you know send send that crazy guy in to interview the suspect he, you don't know what he's going to say I don't think he knows what he's going to say. You know, a lot of times I don't. I try, you know, people say, does he even write anything down? He says he has all these books. I'm talking about myself right now. He says he has all these books with, that he writes in. But does he follow? Does he follow any coherent thing? How does he write? I guess people imagine that say, if he does write, he probably writes like one of those crazy people where they're not always within the lines. And, you know, he's going catty corner side to side and there's words here, here, and there. No, I start on the left and go to the right and then go down the line underneath, just like everyone else. But not like everything else. The next sentence could be like, I really like dogs. Should I order a pizza? These socks are tight. These are the kind of things that I think of. That's my brain. And who knows? The way I think may be a way for me to keep a healthy brain. Creating new per, um, connections. Because that's the way the brain works. There's connections. You have thoughts. They link. Neurons link together. And that's how we retrieve memories. Doing that. When I was up in Philadelphia after visiting my father, I made, and I think I made this last show, I made a visit going around to my old high school, my old elementary school, just driving around. It was during the school hours, so I realized when I was doing it, I said, Boy, this sounds kind of creepy. A guy's driving a rental car. Uh, outside of school and there's no way I'm thinking in my head I'm able to project into the future yes I'm with you too that I'm not going to go up and ask it for a tour to school but then again not asking for a tour to school is creepy too because a creep wouldn't go and say and take a tour to school but maybe they would maybe they would but while I was doing it 
and was looking at my old houses and my old haunts and the places I used to eat, I got sad and sentimental. But that made me reflect on things change. I've changed. I don't know if I became sentimental and reflective and that triggered a kind of a, what do they call that? The vagus nerve where you get sad or, I don't know if vagus nerve makes you cry or anything like that. I'm not a, a big crier, but I do get teary-eyed sometimes. I do, I do that. But I know when I was younger, I had a limited amount of experiences that I was able to draw upon. And as I get older, there's more and more. And that's how I relate to people, going back and relate memories. And I remember sad memories, happy memories. I try. I do remember a lot of happy things. And there's a rumination or, or thoughts that you have about missing things that aren't there anymore. But you, I also how I get myself out is I remember there's going to be new memories. There's going to be new happy memories. And that brings me back. There's always something new to have if you prepare yourself to be accepted by that. And I know and say, hey, Jim, you're not a therapist. You're not a psychologist. You're not an analyst. You don't know all I can speak for is myself, and I hope sometimes people say, I can't relate to the person that has psychosis or hallucinations. Well, who knows? You know, a whole life could be hallucinating, but I can't, I can't relate to that, and I can't really help you with that. But I can help you if you share the same way I think. I can tell you how I do it. And I don't know if that would help you, but it does help me. And having a big platform such as the show, being a bartender and a show, I can relate to people and say, but one thing I can share with them is it's all different ways of living. As long as you're not endeavoring to hurt people and influence them negatively, And, and do all sorts of things. As long as you're doing that, you're, let's say you're just being neutral. That's a good start. But it's also, I think it's very fulfilling to be helpful. I think it is. It, it, you should always endeavor that. There's nothing like the accomplishment of doing something nice for somebody. Helping someone with their luggage when you're on the... You know, like, if you're healthy and you're tall or you can reach the upper b- luggage bin and there's a smaller person there and they need they have luggage up there, I go, can I help you with that? Will you let me help you with that? That's for me as much as them. I realize that. It makes me feel good to help them. It makes me feel good to hold the door. It makes me feel good to help someone out when they're having troubles. And it gets me out of the place of poor me, poor me. We say that in AA. When you start doing, you got to get a case of the, oh, poor me, poor me, pour me another drink. So that's, that's my thing. And it's a selfish thing. I like feeling good. Bill Murray, who's gotten a little flack for some shit he's done on uh, movies. We all do shit. Now, I've said wrong stuff before. I'll admit it. When you get wrapped up in the ecstasy of someone you're attracted to, in my case, women, you might say the wrong thing. You could go down that path, but I'm not talking about that at the moment. I'm talking about the um, Bill Murray in Scrooge, in Scrooge. In the end, he gives a little speech on this set of the show, he's the, a big executive for a, uh, I'll give you a synopsis for it. He's a modern day Scrooge. 
He's an executive for a network, and they're producing a live broadcast of Scrooge, or Christmas Carol. And towards the end of this broadcast, he has a breakthrough. He has that breakthrough, the breakthrough where Scrooge throws open the windows and says, boy, what day is it? And he, he just says, I'm going to be this way from now on. And he, he talks about it. And it's very, for me, it hits me. It hits me. It's a guy that was selfish and self-absorbed. And I've been there before. I have. And he says, listen, there are people who are not doing that well. They're struggling. If you see someone on the street, you know, all you have to do is make a sandwich. Here's a sandwich. Eat. Here's a blanket for you. Do something. And he says, and if you start feeling doing this and you're going to feel good about it, then you'll want to keep on doing it. I'm not going to tell you the world would be a better place if everyone did that. It would be. It would be if that was a problem. If that was, if our problem was too many people being helpful, I would like that problem. I would love that problem. Too many people being nice to each other, holding the door and being that. Yeah, some people make jokes about it. They make movies where people are too nice. Eh. Yeah, because sometimes when when there's a lot of people being nice and you're a group of people that are so, so sweet and so wonderful and you have negative feelings and you feel as if, ah, oh, I, I just want, to, I want a relationship. I need stuff. I need money. I need clothes. I need this. I, I need access to health care. And there's all these happy people going about their life, living Good, the good life, you may say, well, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Well, maybe find someone a little less fortunate than you and do something for them. Do something for them. And there is, unless you're at the bottom of the line there, I understand. But if you're sitting and listening to this podcast, my guess is if you're not at the end of the line. And if you're still listening after all the things I said, then there is a spark in that. So don't sell yourself short. There's never there's never a time where you're totally helpless. I had a, uh, uh, a teacher in school, uh, a priest, and he touched me. He touched my heart. He didn't physically touch me. I was a grown grown man talking to him, and we're talking about his concept of the afterlife. And he said to me, I don't believe, you know, you, you've heard this before, there is no hell. Hell is something we create. Hell is a creation of our own minds. And there's nothing we can do To, and, and as heinous of things as you've done in life, think about this. If you do believe, whatever your belief in your higher power is, if it's a loving higher power, a loving God, a loving Buddha, a, love a, a loving Yahweh, a loving Allah, whatever you want, a totally loving, they would not can condemn their child to eternity of torment if they ever loved them at all. They'd give them an option to get out of it. They would give them an option to get out of it and write that path. And that's what I try to do on the podcast. I try to do it in person. When A lot of times I see them when they come, people coming to the bar and they're carrying shit with them. And when I say carrying shit, I'm not talking about something physical. It's something mental, psychological. They're carrying this weight. They're not letting it go. Recently, I heard that, you know, real emotions, initial emotions last momentarily. It's the memory of that emotion that we don't let go. I'm going to try to tell a story and try to make it coherent before I end the show today. There is two 
Buddhist monks walking down on a long journey down a road. And it had recently rained. And the road's kind of mucky. And at one point, a carriage comes up to a household. And a young, well-off woman is loaded down with packages. And her servants grab the packages. And as she's ready to get out of the carriage, they see that there's a large puddle. And there's no way she can get across that puddle without muddying her dress. And the servants can't help her because their hands are full of the packages that she's carrying. And she is feeling self-absorbed. And it happens to be a woman, but that could have been easily been a man. But self-absorbed, thinking about herself. Well, how am I going to get across? How am I going to do this? And, and she's very demanding about getting aid. And the, the two monks come along. One's older, one's younger. The older monk takes the woman, puts her, puts her on his back, which would, you know, I'm sure he asks her, can I carry you? And she reluctantly gets on his back, accepts his help, gets taken to dry ground, and then he's unceremoniously pushed away and not thanked. And the woman's quite rude to the guy. The two monks continue on their journey. The younger monk is at a loss for words. He can't understand this. And he's looking at the older monk. He keeps on looking at him. He's stewing and he's thinking. And the older monk's just going about his way, observing, looking at nature. And then finally, the younger monk says, I can't believe what that woman, how she reacted to your help and you should be insulted about that and that is a travesty. And the older monk says, listen, I carried that woman for a couple seconds. You're carrying her for the hours. And what he pretty much was saying is, let it go. And we hear that all the time. It's very hard to do. It's very hard to do, but it is a destination we should all journey for. And whatever we can learn to break that thing where we let those things go, let go the anger, let go the hate, let go the resentment. I know I have to let go things on politics, let go things on familial relationships, friends, things, let go of things that I blame myself for. And just go about life without having to carry it anymore. Well, listen, this is Jim the Keys Bartender. That is the show for today. I hope you have a great day. Like I said, I'm not a therapist. If it helps you, it helps you. Get some help. Don't be unhappy. And I'll be back again. Take care. And happy Mother's Day to all Uh, our mothers out there, and happy birthday to my lovely wife, and tonight is my daughter. My daughter's going to prom. I hope she has a good time, too. Uh, This is Jim. Goodbye.